Best of r slash tales from retail episode 11. I'm currently working as a tool rental associate at a big box home improvement store. I'd transferred down to TR a couple of months or so before this story takes place. For some background info, we rent post hole diggers, or augers. They are meant to be used to dig holes in regular dirt, not cement or anything like that. We have three sizes, and the largest one you have to tow with your vehicle. It was a bright, warm, sunny Saturday. The regular opener, who we'll call CW, has been in this department for 80 years, so she really knows what she's talking about. She was in the process of assisting an older lady, O.L., and her adult son, As, who were looking at our smallest auger and asking her if she thought it'd be big enough. CW, based on what you're telling me, it sounds like you're really going to need the towable one for your project. Oh well, no, no, my son has done research on this. As, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. CW shrugged it off since we were busy, and went ahead and rented them the small auger. Lo and behold, a couple hours later they were back. Oh well, okay, you were right. We need the towable one. I know, I know. Customer who admitted they were wrong and the associate was right. It doesn't happen every day. But then after CW left, OL returned, this time by herself. She showed me the pin that held the drill bit onto the auger. It was bent, as if hit by a hammer. Oh well, I think she gave me a faulty machine. This pin shouldn't be bent like this, right? Me? No. No, it shouldn't. I'd been a cashier in the main part of the store for a long time, so I knew people were stupid. But I was still learning about the mistakes customers could make when renting equipment. So I just shrugged it off, and swapped the tool out for another one. Just before I got off work, OL returned once more. The pin was bent badly once again, and the auger hadn't drilled through the ground at all. Ha! Huh. That struck me as pretty odd, but I wasn't familiar enough with the equipment to know what had gone wrong. But I suspected it was user error, and so I closed out her contract, charged her the full amount for the time she had the tool, and sent her on her merry way. We got a call from OL the next day, CW answered the phone, and I was standing at the computer right next to her, listening in on the conversation as best I could. OL had called to complain. She'd been looking at her contract and the final copy, and discovered I hadn't marked the tool down for her, but she wanted a markdown because the tool had been faulty. After all, it hadn't been able to drill through concrete. Wait, what? Apparently she and her son the one who knew exactly what he was doing, had decided to use the auger as a jackhammer. The kicker is, the jackhammers are right next to the augers, and they don't look anything alike. Augers don't go through concrete. That is not their purpose. The bits, which are metal spirals held on by a damn pin, are not strong enough or sturdy enough for that. CW tried to explain this to her, but OL was having none of it. CW ended up transferring her to the mod. The mod after spending a good 20 minutes on the phone with her, ended up just giving her a markdown. When I asked CW if OL had said anything about going through concrete, she shook her head. CW, she told me it was hard ground. Apparently our definition of hard ground was not the same as OLS or OZ's. That story is why I'm very careful when I ask a customer what they're using the tool for. TL. Doctor. A customer rents a post hole digger with the intention of using it as a jackhammer. It doesn't work, and she ends up getting a markdown because she's so annoying. Thank you, next. For context I work in the cafe of a big brand store in the UK. This happened to me yesterday. A woman came into the cafe I work at and asked if she could have a cake in a takeaway box. I got her that box and, presuming her next question would be a takeaway mug told her that we don't do hot drinks in a takeaway mug. She then stares at me for about 10 seconds, without blinking. She then asks for a tea in a takeaway mug, so I again tell her we don't do takeaway mugs. She then goes on a rant about how she's 10 minutes late to pick up her daughter. After an eternity of her rambling she agrees to have a tea in to drink it in the cafe. I go to put the tea bag in the mug and she screams how disgusting I am for touching her tea bag. So I guess I was supposed to use the force. She then asks for my manager, who's a very kind woman, and says that I should be immediately fired because I lack all communication skills and am generally incompetent. My manager tries to calm her down but she gets so mad that they call in my boss. 
The woman then goes on a 20 minute rant about how this place is terrible and how I'm incompetent and disgusting. Guess she forgot about picking up her daughter. My boss tries her hardest to calm this mad woman down but nothing works. She walks past my boss and basically makes her own teapot and walks out, without paying. Security come and take the woman away while she screams that this place is awful and we're the reason her daughter will be caught in the rain. Thank you. Next. A little pretext. I work in a music store that also buys slash sells used instruments like a pawn shop. Being in a city, this means we get a lot of sketchy items brought in. This was one of those times. So since I am a manager at this store, I have to make the final call on all things being sold to us. Verifying the condition of the item is good, and that it isn't stolen. In walks this very loud and obnoxious couple that is clearly not sober, to say the least. They make their way up to the counter that one of my associates is at and plop down a very torn up guitar case. Oh great I think to myself as I finish ringing up a customer on the adjacent counter. Associate opens case and starts inspecting it before I make my way over to begin asking the list of is this item stolen without outright asking questions since this couple is definitely on something. The guitar was in decent shape to my surprise, minus a few scratches, normal for some players, but my associate is giving me a weird look as he's checking out the bridge of the guitar and waves me over. Associate, hey, there's something stuck under the bridge to be unofficial, I think it's an altide or something. So I take a closer look underneath. Yeah, he's right. There's some altoid looking thing lodged under the bridge just perfectly enough that if you were looking straight down at the guitar you'd never see it. You might see where this is going. The whole time we're inspecting it the couple have been walking around the store talking at shouting level and dry humping on and off. Very distracted. So I proceed to poke out this altoid looking thing and plop it on a towel we had lying around for closer inspection. Now I've never been near any hard drugs, only through pictures. But once it was on the towel my associate and I knew immediately what it was. There was a piece of coke slash crack sitting on a towel on my counter in my store. Associate, do we call the cops? Me, a couple is still paying us no attention. At this point my CSM comes over and just stops and stares at the crack currently sitting on the counter. Looks over at the couple and back at the crack. Grabs the towel and crumpled it all up, tossed it in the trash and told me that guy wasn't a thief, just a crazy crackhead who bought the guitar from us years before. So I go ahead and proceed to buy the guitar from him. The couple then left, none the wiser that they sold us a guitar with enough crack to buy the guitar itself. So I was told, I don't know street value on crack. Thank you, next. Black Friday is coming up and so are all of my horrible retail memories. Last year around the holidays, a lady, a Karen with designer sunglasses and an expensive purse, came up to my co-worker and I at the register and was immediately hostile. She threw over a couple used, beaten up scrunchies and demanded a refund. A co-worker and I looked at each other, the lady, and then back down at the sad little hair pieces in front of us. We apologized and told her that we don't sell those scrunchies in packs of two, only five and we would need the others to process the return. She starts screaming at us, saying that we don't know what we're talking about, that she bought only two scrunchies, etc. My co-worker was adamantly standing his ground while I watched in disbelief and mild amusement. To be fair, bourbon mousefitters is expensive, she probably spent like $10 on these scrunchies. I was about to grab a manager because neither of us got paid enough to deal with people like this. But during her screaming match, she called her daughter and put it on speakerphone. Tell them that IT was only two scrunchies. I could barely contain my laughter when the daughter confirmed that the pack was, indeed, five, right in front of us. She snatched the scrunchies away without looking at us at all and quickly walked out the door while still loudly yelling something we couldn't make out. Edit, the five pack of scrunchies was $12 and tax. Happy holidays everyone. My heart is with every retail worker that still has to deal with people like this woman. Thank you. Next. Tale number 3 from the game store. It's a fairly normal day. Checking customers out. Processing trades. The usual. In comes a guy wanting to buy a controller. I put it on the counter and scan it. And just before I process the sale, there's a brownout and the power flickers. The computers stay on. So I go ahead and try to finish the transaction. The guy wanted to use a debit card to pay. 
He slides his card and the computer displays an error message. It's at this point I realize the internet has cut out, which I confirm by attempting to check the balance on a gift card, which brings up the same error message. I say to the guy, I'm sorry, it looks like that brown up knocked our internet out and we can't process card transactions. The computer is still working, though, so if you have cash, we can still do it. But I only have my card. I don't have any cash on me, he laments. I'm sorry. Hopefully it's not out for too long. Do you want to wait a bit to see if our connection comes back on soon? No, I'm actually in a hurry. Oh, sorry about that. I can hold the controller for you if want to come back later. I need it now. Can't I just take it now? Dot. Um, do you have cash? No, I already said I didn't. Well, in that case, I'm afraid you wouldn't be able to buy it until our system comes back up. Well... That's not my fault. I have the money on my debit card. It's your fault that you can't process it, so I should be able to get the controller. Anyway, I'm at a loss. I didn't cause the power to flicker, sir, so I don't see how it's my fault. Well, you should have a way of dealing with this. There was a method of getting a physical imprint of the card to process later, but that's only possible when the computer detects a problem and prints out a sheet automatically. It can't be done manually. I'm really sorry, but as it stands, it looks like we can't sell you the controller at this time. I say and take the controller from the cash rep and put it on the back counter, just in case he decides to take it anyway. Apparently, this was a slight to him. What? You're saying my money's no good here? I have the money right here. He says as he waves his card about. I understand, sir, but due to circumstances beyond our control, we can't access that money at the moment. I'm really sorry. I don't care if you're sorry, I need the controller and I need to go. I can't wait for your stupid internet to start working again, he barks. I'm sorry, sir, but there's nothing I can do for you at the moment, I say. Well, you can give me the number to corporate because I'm gonna make a complaint. I already had the card in my hand because I knew we were going to end up here. Here you go, sir, I say as I hand the card to him. Is there anything else I can do for you today? He looks at me and says, you're an idiot, and waltzes off, without the controller. I gave a heads up to my district manager about the situation in case he would call to complain. To my knowledge, he never did. Free from the chains number one, give me that more expensive item for the same price as the cheaper item. Free from the chains number two, tell me if that other business is open or not. Thank you. Next. Background. So at my job we don't have a return policy. You are only allowed to exchange the products you buy. So if you buy 7 items and want to exchange them, you have to buy another 7 items. When it comes to food you are allowed to exchange it as long as you exchange it the same day. This is for food safety reasons and plus we are a dollar store. Anyway cast. W. Woman. CW. Coworker. M. Manager. Story. Luckily this W wasn't one my line because I don't think I would have handled it well. It was during my store slight rush hour. W comes up to see W and the exchange goes like this. W. Hi. I brought these dried fruits and when I opened the bag the fruit was brown and spoiled. I would like to exchange them. CW. Sure. Do you have your receipt? W. Yes hand CW receipt. CW. Um. Mom you brought this over a month ago. I can't exchange them sorry. W. Why not? The fruit was old. Dried fruit should last for months. CW. I understand but you brought this a month ago I can't exchange it. After they go back and forth a while until CW calls for the manager. M. Yes. CW. This lady brought these a month ago and she wants to exchange it. And she coming crazy at me. M. I'm sorry we can't exchange the food item. W. Why not? They were spoiled. M. It is a month old and if we exchange it we can't resell it. W. Well that's what happens when you food items. M. Either way mom we you can't exchange it. W. Well I need to look up the law about food items M. In the end she didn't get to exchange the fruit. Also I don't know if there is a law about retroing. I doubt it. But it had nothing to do with the law. It's our store policy. Honestly lots of customers always have a problem with our exchange policy. Despite the receipt stating we exchange not return slash refund. 
Though I understand not everyone looks at the bottom of their receipt, but don't get mad at us because you can't get a refund. Thank you. Next. Title says it all. All day today we got calls from people who bought a TV earlier in the day, and when they got home, they all had broken screens. It seemed too much of a coincidence. The worst part was that they were the big name brand TVS. So when people came to do an exchange, the only TVS we had left were the small, not so popular brands and people were mad ASF. None of us knew what the heck was going on. Like when we looked at the broken TVS, they looked like they were bent down the middle. And it was a lot of them, and we're all just like WTF is going on, aside from the customers being mad, because at the end of today we apologized and issued a refund, there's nothing we can do, this was a freaky day.